Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to our panelists as well. Now, it may surprise you that someone from New Mexico is showing interest in a hearing pertaining to warming oceans, specifically to how the climate crisis is threatening ocean industries. You used to have um, a coastline <laughs> just a couple of million years ago. Yes, sir. Um, I'm, I'm going to let that go, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm not going to... <laughs> going to jump down that area. But I'll this, reset your clock, so but I'm not waiting I was, your I, was, I was very proud to introduce a piece of legislation with Senator Blackburn um, to improve access to the fastest computers in America to help us better understand the ocean models, to build advanced models, namely working with the Department of Energy. Now, this effort will result in better forecasts of extreme ocean events and support a new generation of weather and climate models. The challenge of rapidly changing ocean conditions requires further research and development using tools like cutting edge supercomputers and AI. Ocean industries like fisheries and tourism need accurate forecasts to be able to plan ahead for the next day's weather and adapt to changing seasonal ocean patterns and we all rely on National Weather Service forecasts for our livelihoods, and I am proud to support the service's collaboration with the Department of Energy National Labs already. I, I, I want to see it improve and uh, uh, see, see that access um, uh, dramatically change. Now, Dr. Dutton, yes or no, has climate change made historical weather patterns a less reliable basis for weather forecasting? Yes, that's correct. And Dr. Dutton, yes or no, would advanced models that better predict the rapidly evolving ocean conditions help businesses and communities adapt to climate change? 100%, yes. And Dr. Dutton, is there more that Congress can do to help ocean industries use better forecasts of extreme ocean events as they adapt to a warming ocean? That's a great question. Captain Schaefer might be better able to explain how that information gets transferred to the people who need to use it out on the seas, actually. Can you repeat the question one more time, please? Is there more that Congress can do to help ocean industries use better forecasts of extreme ocean events as they adapt to warming ocean? Thank you for the question, and I think absolutely. Um, Science and, and data drive not only management of our, of our fish stocks, but the health of our oceans. And so I would say absolutely. I appreciate that. Now, as I understand it, better forecasts of ocean conditions would benefit all of us, not just those in the ocean industry. All of us, and especially those of us in the Southwest, need better forecasts of El Nino to help us prepare for the extreme weather that drives the devastating wildfires and flash flooding like we saw uh, recently in 2022. Alternating the drought and heavy rainfall have impacted New Mexican agriculture, recreation, livelihoods. We depend on the snowpack for recreation, but also to ensure that our surface water, irrigation, agricultural way of life um, exists. Um, improving our ocean modeling capabilities isn't just important for protecting our ocean economies. New Mexico communities and businesses also depend on these models for accurate rainfall predictions. Now, Dr. Dunn, yes or no, do the extreme ocean cycles that are harmful to ocean industries also impact inland states like New Mexico? Yes, and you mentioned one, El Nino is a big one, right? Dr. Sumela, yes or no, do our communities and businesses in New Mexico experience economic costs from climate-induced extreme ocean warming? Yes, absolutely, yeah. And a follow-up question to that, would improved forecasts of weather and ocean conditions allow my constituents to plan for severe weather and save them money and potentially save lives? Yes, sir. Hmm. I very much appreciate the calling of this hearing, Mr. Chairman, and what we have seen coming out of national institutions like the Department of Energy is their missions depend on climate, on the movement of what the wind's going to do or blow or the warming of those oceans, things of that nature. Um, two years ago, when there was this extreme fire event in New Mexico, it started as a prescribed burn. 
For whatever reason, the weather forecast that the forest was using that day said that they could start this fire and all the rest. One thing that I've never figured out, Mr. Chairman, is on the little farm that I still call home, we'll go and we'll burn the brush from the acequia where the water's going to flow so that it's easier to, to clean and maintain. And it's an earthen structure that we clean by hand every year. The same day that that prescribed burn was started, that someone at NSF was told that the weather was okay, my brother called to actually burn the little ditch on our little piece of land and that little farm. And he was told no by our local fire station. This fire resulted in the largest fire in New Mexico's history. And subsequently, we've seen flooding that has been taking out the homes that many of the firefighters and first responders even saved. It's been devastating. And so I'm hopeful that more accurate data, more accurate models will help us all across America. Um, and, uh, and this is an area that I, I hope that we can all work together as well. But thank you for calling this important hearing.